Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Metropolis Radio, and today, this is the third and final video of our James Bond theme day. Now, I know that uh, that that this article is a bit older, I mean, we're talking, you know, over a year old, but I do think it's still quite relevant, and that is James Bond's original quantum plan, how Spectre changed the Daniel Craig movies. Had a legal issue not been resolved in time, the Daniel Craig James Bond films would have gone in a different direction without Spectre or Blofeld. Wait, you mean so James Bond and Blofeld wouldn't be wouldn't be related? Imagine my freaking shock. That was the worst part of Spectre, by the way. Even Daniel Craig James Bond fans um, admit to that. Um, the villainous Spectre organization almost didn't appear in the Daniel Craig 007 movies. When Daniel Craig was cast as James Bond, the entire film series was officially rebooted. While continuity had never been a terribly important part of the 007 movies, save for the tongue-in-cheek fan theory that James Bond is a time lord, uh, the character had a degree of consistency that could be traced from 1962's Dr. No all the way to 2002's Die Another Day. Basically, what they're saying here is the is the first 20 James Bond movies from Dr. No to Die Another Day had a very loose continuity, something that even I've been saying for a long time now. Uh, Craig's first outing as 007, Casino Royale, featured, featured James Bond as a newly minted 00 agent and introduced a brand new story involving a mysterious organization, Quantum of Solace. Um... Sorry, I jumped a little ahead of myself there. Um, the mysterious organization was not revealed until the next movie, yet Quantum of Solace, released in 2008, revealed the name that the organization was Quantum, though the name is scarcely uttered in the, in the film itself. Nevertheless, it was obvious that Quantum served as a stand-in for Spectre, the legendary criminal organization led by number one, Ernest, Sta Ernest Stavro Blofeld. And I know I, I butchered that name. I'm going to try again. Ernest Stavro Blofeld. That's about as close as I'm going to get to actually saying his name. I'm just going to say fucking Blofeld from now on. Uh, due to legal reasons, Eon Productions, the studio behind the 007 movies, with the exception of 1967's Casino Royale and 1983's Never Say Never Again, uh, could not use the name Spectre, nor the character of Blofeld. Thus, the filmmakers hedged their bets and had the organization lurk deep in the background of the first two movies and entirely absent from 2011 Skyfall? If I'm not mistaken, I think uh, Skyfall came out in 2012 because Skyfall uh, marked the 50th anniversary of the James Bond franchise, and uh, 50th anniversary of the James Bond franchise happened in 2012. Uh, intentionally or not, this echoed the Sean Connery movies, which included Spectre as a part of its first two installments before dropping them from the third movie, Goldfinger. But what this art, but what this author's not bringing up, they were brought back in Thunderball. You only live twice. Um, Honor Majesty's Secret Service had them, granted that was George Lazenby, uh, Diamonds Are Forever, and then they were dropped in Live and Let Die. Uh, eventually the legal issues were resolved in time for Spectre, and Blofeld to appear in 2015 Spectre, but there was a strong possibility that Eon, everything or nothing, wouldn't, wouldn't have the rights to the criminal mastermind in his diabolical institution. Had that been the case, Daniel Craig's most recent 007 and the upcoming after a coronavirus delay, No Time to Die, would have turned out quite differently. So let's get into the article's first point here, and that is uh, James Bond's Spectre lawsuit explained. Due to legal issues involving Thunderball producer Kevin McClory, uh, Everything or Nothing Productions lost the rights to the character of Blofeld and his criminal group Spectre. Before the James Bond film series began in earnest, author Ian Fleming worked with McClory on developing a film script. Uh, thought the film was ultimately... Uh, I meant to, I think they meant to say though. They accidentally wrote thought. Um, though the film was ultimately canceled, the script eventually served as a basis for Thunderball. The novel, the, the novel which would eventually become the fourth 007 film... Um, uh, Dr. Noah from Rush With Love. Yes, it was the fourth. Okay, they're not wrong on that. Uh, this led to a spiral of lawsuits over the ownership of elements of, of, from the film, which ultimately resulted in Blofeld and Spectre becoming off-limits to Eon Productions' 007 films. These legal issues also led to the development of, of Never Say Never Again, the unofficial 007 film starring Sean Connery. Um, yes, for those that don't know, uh, Sean Connery did star in an unofficial James Bond movie, and uh, it's uh, it's quite interesting. It also stars, I believe, uh, Kim Basinger was the Bond girl. Um, da, da, da. It's set, it's it said the character of Carl Stromberg in 1977's The Spy Who Loved Me, great James Bond movie by the way, was originally written as Blofeld, but those plans had to be altered due to the ongoing legal battle with McClory. 
Uh, perhaps this is why Bond's killing of Stromberg felt particularly personal and violent compared to others in the series. In response to the legal situation involving McClory's claim to Blofeld and Spectre, Eon Productions decided to knock Blofeld off the board once and for all in the opening of 1981's For Your Eyes Only. Uh, For Your Eyes Only is uh, kind of so-so. I mean, I haven't seen the movie in several years, so um, I, I, I don't really remember that much of it, if I'm being 100% honest. Uh, the film begins with Roger Moore's 007 visiting the grave of his late wife, Tracy, who had been murdered by Blofeld in the shocking ending of 1969's Honor Majesty's Secret Service. There, he is accosted by an unarmed bald man in a wheelchair who is clearly supposed to be Blofeld. Well, yeah, the white cat gives it away. Uh, the villain assumes remote control of Bond's helicopter and performs death-defying stunts with the intention of scaring 007 before, before ultimately causing the vehicle to crash. However, Bond gets the upper hand and wrestles control of the vehicle from Blofeld, using it to lift the criminal high into the air and kill him off by dropping him down a smokestack. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the day that Ernst Starvo Blofeld died. Uh, the death of Blofeld in the opening minutes of Free Your Eyes only is seen as something of an anticlimax, but is but it's also a symbolic victory for Bond in the series. Dispatching Blofeld in such a low-key fashion resolved the biggest unresolved storyline of the Connery era, while proving that Blofeld was no longer necessary for the James Bond franchise to survive and thrive. Now, here's the article's second point. Quantum and Daniel Craig's James Bond movies. With the official rebooting of James Bond through Casino Royale, the films were free to pick up any plot threads from previous movies and tell fresh versions of old stories. Early on in Casino Royale, it becomes very clear that the mysterious organization is meant to stand in for Spectre, even if they didn't have the rights to the infamous syndicate or its iconic leader. In Quantum of Solace, Bond gets his hands on a pin representing a membership in Quantum. The pin is, shaped, is in the shape of a letter Q in the same style that is used for the lo logo for the film. The stylized depiction of the letter is not unlike an octopus, the symbol for Spectre in the Connery films, and is clearly meant to evoke emotions of nostalgia from viewers aware of 007's history. Eventually, in 2015 Spectre, it's revealed that Quantum was but one arm of the sinister organization led by Blofeld, a subsidiary, not only explains the Q logo's resemblance to an octopus, but also allows the stand-in syndicate to fade into the background in favor of the more high-profile Spectre that fans had waited decades to see return. Had the decades-old legal trouble invoking Thunderball not been resolved, it's likely Quantum would have replaced Spectre as the arc villains of the, James, of the Daniel Craig movies. It's possible that, instead of bringing back Ernst Stavro Blofeld, a A.K.A. Blofeld. I know I would just say Blofeld, but fuck it, I don't care at this point. As the mastermind behind all the evil in, D in Craig's films, the organization, the organization would not have been given such a personal motive. Maybe the filmmakers would have introduced an original character to serve as the head of the snake, or maybe they would have revived a different old favorite like Dr. Nor or, or even Carl Stromberg, who had previously stood in for Blofeld in The Spy Who Loved Me as detailed above. Again, allegedly... Uh, I don't believe that's ever been confirmed. Uh, and here's the article's third and final point. Quantum was retconned into Spectre. Uh, once the rights to Spectre had finally been secured after so many years, Everything or Nothing Productions sought to immediately capitalize on their son Boone. Nowhere is that more evident than in the title of the movie Spectre. It's unknown how the Bond films would have played out without the inclusion of Spectre and Blofeld, but it feels like Everything or Nothing Productions was always banking on eventually having the opportunity to put their new 007 on a collision course with a rebooted version of Blofeld. After the critically divisive Quantum of Solace, the series moved away from the story arc began by those first two Craig films. Skyfall released in 2011. It was released in 2012, dumbass. It coincided with the 50th anniversary of the James Bond franchise. And I remember, I went to go see the movie in theaters in November of 2012. Um, Skyfall, released in 2012, not 2011, was, was a runaway success, even by 007 standards. Again, I think that had more to do with the 50th anniversary of the James Bond franchise and not really Skyfall. Uh, and became the first film in the franchise to gross over a billion dollars at the global box office. The film had scarcely anything to do with the previous two films, to the point of depicting Craig Bond as an over-the-hill old agent out of touch with how things are done in the 21st century. Just five years earlier, Casino Royale had showed Bond as a young, new double-O agent who acted impulsively, much to, much to chagrin of the, old, of the older MI6 bosses. 
Spectre retconned the main villain of Skyfall, Silva, into having been a Spectre agent all along, presumably sent by Blofeld to test 007, pushing him to his limits by killing M and, for and forcing him to existentially question his own, his own purpose as a patriotic assassin. The result is that Bond is off-balance by the events of Spectre, effectively at his lowest point while confronted with Blofeld, his greatest threat. Again, I don't think these movies should have been sequels to each other. And they do highlight one of the biggest problems with the Daniel Craig era right here. Uh, the film had scarcely anything to do with the previous two Bond films, to the point of depicting Craig's Bond as an over-the-hill old agent out of touch. So, you go from Casino Royale and Quantum of Solace, where it's Daniel Craig learning how to be Bond... And then you get the Skyfall, and it's, well, James, you're over the hill. The next stop's under it. Why don't you just retire? Uh, despite, having been, despite having been produced one film at a time, the Daniel Craig 007 movies form a complete arc, one that is set to conclude with no time to die. The film will see the return of Blofeld as, Craig, as Craig's Bond faces off against one final enemy, the enigmatic villain played by Rami Malek. While plot details are kept tightly under wraps, all the pieces are in place for one final showdown between James Bond and the remnants of Spectre, the lingering evil that has haunted the 007 franchise for nearly 60 years. Um, again, again, I think that the, again, I think that this article is, uh, is quite relevant given the fact that, you know, Quantum, that Quantum was, like they, like they pointed out, Quantum was originally the stand-in for Spectre. Now, how would the Daniel Craig movies have fared? Um, I don't know. I think, I think the, pro the like the problem, I think Spectre and the inclusion of Blofeld actually brought the, uh, actually brought the Daniel Craig James Bond movies down, but I think what ultimately brought down the James the Daniel Craig Bond movies, however, was Skyfall. Basically, and as I chronicled just a couple of minutes ago, you have Casino Royale and Quantum of Solace, you have Daniel Craig's Bond learning how to be Bond, and then Skyfall is, well, James, you're over the hill, next stop's under it. And guys, that's pretty much all I got for you. Uh, if you stuck around this long, thanks so much for doing so. And if you've been following me long enough, you know I am terrible at ending these videos, so I will just see you guys on uh, next time.